place. Joining us now to offer his opinion, Blaine Fowler, BYU TV football analyst and national championship quarterback. Blaine, we think it's Central Florida. So does the UConn play-by-play -play guy, Joe D'Ambrosio. Are the Golden Knights the scariest game on BYU's schedule? Well, they, they are a matchup problem for BYU. I think that this is a team that, if you watched them at all last year, has SEC-type team speed. Yeah, I and, said and they're middle-of-the-road kind of SEC-type team. Yeah, they're, they're, they're really scary that way. And, and the teams that have caused BYU's problems in the past are teams that just – where, where BYU struggles to, uh, to, to maintain defensively, not give up big plays, um, you know, with, with all kinds of weapons on offense, and then teams that can close real quickly defensively and, and make plays. So, so this is a team with tremendous you know, team speed. And, you know, I know that they lose Bortles, their great quarterback. If he was back, I think that they would be a preseason top 15 team. Yeah. And so, so the only reason they're not is because he's gone and he went out and went to the NFL. Well, you guys have been talking about it. they got enough coming back from a team that was a legit top 15 team last year, no question about it, in terms of talent. I'm talking top 15 talent, and, it's, and I think they have top 10 speed, and there's a lot of those guys coming back, and so it presents a great challenge. And it's a great football environment down there. It's one of the newest stadiums in the country. It's beautiful. It's like an NFL-type environment. BYU's got to travel all the way across the country, so – when I look at that schedule, that's the game that jumps out at me that I go, okay, this is a game that everybody thinks, and when I say everybody, all of the BYU fans just think, well, that's a win. They're going to go back. UCF, they can beat UCF. That's a scary one. That's a really scary one back there. It's one thing to match up straight up with the team on a neutral field. It's another to play a road game on a Thursday on the East Coast. What factor will that play in the game, Blaine? It, it plays a big factor. And when, when you're, you're playing a team – that really tests you from all angles offensively. Um, you know they'll go attack the edges in the run game. They've got a lot, a good screen game where they get the ball out and they get it to speedy wide receivers. They do a lot offensively, and so a team that does multiple things offensively and tests you, you'd like to have a full week to prepare. And not only do they not have a full week to prepare, a, a travel week makes it an even shorter week. And then BYU, who won't practice on Sundays, which is good. We, you know we don't want them to practice on Sundays. Um, but that's their policy. It, it makes for a short preparation week when you combine a, a cross-country travel with a short week, and that, that adds to the challenge of playing against a team that also not only do they come with a lot of talent, they come in with a lot of confidence. They're, they're in that Boise State mode now where they yeah. think they're good. They just show up and they think they're good. The last two years. Yeah. They, they, expect, they expect to win. And teams that expect to win – they play with confidence out on the field. They don't hesitate. They close to the ball faster. They attack. And that's the mindset that they play with now. And so, yeah, that's a scary game. That's a really scary game. I, I would love to be – I know that's not one that we're planning on traveling to with BYU TV, but we'll have a great pre- and post-game show from the studio in Provo. But that's one that I, I wish we could travel to because I'd like to get my eyes on that team up close and personal from right down on the field because – when we watched them on TV last year, it just seems like a team with just tremendous speed. BYU TV analyst Blaine Fowler with us on BYU Sports Nation. Is Spencer, it, you'll be there. I will be in Orlando. So well, yeah, Blaine, I, you'll get yours. You'll be in us. <laughs> okay. As, as long as Spencer's there, then I feel good about okay. it. Okay. <laughs> he can, he, I, can, I can say, Spencer, is that guy as fast as he looks? And he can go, yeah, he's yep, fast. Yep, he is, he is faster I, in person. I think that's how the conversation will go. I, I don't even really see the need to go anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> You know, here, uh -huh. there, there's another team. I mean, I think UCF, Texas, we're not calling them a scary team because we just know Texas. That's is the good. thing. We you know what to expect. 19. We know what to expect from Texas, so I don't think they're scary. Yeah, and, and here's the thing about Texas. This is, I mean, remember, we rushed for over 500 yards on them last year. They're not going to be happy. <laughs> 550. They're not going to be happy. And they fired the D coordinator. They got, they got a new staff. I believe that this staff, I, I look at Utah. So when Utah, um, Back when Ron McBride was there, and, and I think Ron doesn't get enough credit for how good Utah's been because he's the one that changed them from a bad team to a competitive team, and he changed the talent level there. Matt Brown has been an unbelievable recruiter. When we were getting ready to do that Texas game last year, you know, they didn't have – when I was doing my homework on their two deep, they didn't have a single player in their two deep on offense and defense that weren't in the top five in the country coming out of wow, high school in terms amazing. of the ratings. And so, it didn't so 22 matter. players. Yeah, but, but BYU beat them because they played better. Well, that's what's scary now because we know that they have more talent if you're just going to take the sum of the talent. And 
And now I, it reminds me of Utah when Ron McBride was there, stocked up the talent, and then Urban Meyer came in with all the discipline and good game planning, was a better game coach, and, and they were really good that next couple of years. I think that's what we're going to see happen at Texas. They're stocked with talent. And I think that this staff is going to come in, instill more discipline, more team unity, all those things that were lacking in terms of chemistry and execution. And this Texas team, we're going to find that Texas team over the next couple of years right back in the top ten where they belong based on their talent. So that's a scary game, but that's a given scary game. UCF is a scary game because nobody in terms of the fan base is thinking it's a tough game, and I think it's really scary. Yeah. And then the other the other one, I don't know, you, you tell me what you guys think. I think Houston is a little bit yes, scary. Yes. yes, because where it falls in the schedule and they return a ton but of young talent. Basically everybody. Listen to this, Blaine. The top six rushers, the top two quarterbacks, and five of the top six receivers and the top five tacklers. It's going to be the same team that challenged BYU immensely. Now what's in BYU's favor is that it's at home. I think that gives BYU a few right. more points. Yeah, I, I agree, and I think that BYU is going to win this game, but it is not going to be easy. I'll give you three names: John Children of Ocorn, oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Deontay Greenberg, and Daniel Spencer. So, so he's John so John's got. Of so it. he's got he he's got a great. He's a very talented kid. As a freshman, he was unbelievable. So now he comes back with a year under his belt, and he's got great targets to throw to. Deontay Greenberg and Daniel he's Spencer. Those are NFL. Those are NFL wide receivers. So, so you got a, you got a very, very good quarterback that came out of the state of Florida, was one of the best players in Florida out of high school, throwing to two really good receivers behind an offensive line that's a little, you know, it's pretty seasoned. And so they create problems. This, this could be a high scoring game, and and turnovers can make a big difference. Now, I think BYU with a veteran quarterback is not going to turn the ball over, and I think that they're going to, you know, they're going to execute at home. And so I think BYU gets this one. But but as I look down that list. You know, Texas is the game that I think is the most likely lost. UCF is the game that scares me the most. But right there next for me is Houston. That's the next one for me. Yeah, and isn't it interesting that we're not even talking about Boise State or, say, Utah State, that last year BYU went up there and won by 17, but uh, Chucky King got hurt. He's back today, named Mountain West Conference Preseason Offensive Player of the Year. We know what he can do. But BYU fans are not intimidated by Boise State. I think this is interesting. Eight wins last year, new head coach. I think BYU fans think they're going to go up to the Blue Turf and win that, that even though that's really tough. That's, a, that's the one thing that is scary yeah. is playing on the Smurf turf. And, and you know, here's what's interesting. You know, we talked about this. I can't remember if it was last week or the time we talked before that. But um, people are underestimating how good this schedule is because we just talked about three really scary teams to us in Texas, UCF, and, and Houston. And now we're talking – as afterthoughts about Utah State and Boise State, who are very good football teams and very good programs. Eight-win teams. Like and, and, and so you go back to when BYU was playing in the Mountain West, um, this schedule is better than the schedule they had when they were in the Mountain West Conference. And I people agree. act like, oh, geez, BYU's got a breather this year. This is nothing. You go back and play at UConn across the country and then, and then Texas and then UCF. And, and, and it's not just about the teams they're playing. It's about the way the schedule lays out with travel and short weeks and all of that. This is a challenging schedule, guys, but having said that, with a veteran quarterback, with the talent that they have coming back at every position, I still think the expectation is that this team should win 10 or more games this year, even with this tough schedule. There's something to be said. Yeah, there's something to be said about, you mentioned the East Coast travel. The two-time zone, uh, I guess, situation for BYU has not been friendly in the past. Uh, look at, at the season opener at Mississippi. They win by one. Last year's season opener at Virginia, a team that they should have blown out of the water. Yeah, there was the weird weather thing, but they lose that game. So I think some people are concerned about Connecticut because it's an opener on the stop, East Coast. Stop it. You know what? Here's, here's what I my, my feeling on that is it's before school starts, and, and so they've got all kinds of prep time. Uh, they don't have to worry about the guys being distracted with the school getting going. And – so they can go out as early as they need to go out. And BYU's just, they've been good in openers. They, you know, we've got to take last year, and, and I really believe that was just such a weird scenario. I mean, yeah. we were there at that. And it was just so weird with, with the rain. I mean, I've never seen rain like that, and I grew up back there. It, <laughs> it rained so hard. And, and not only with the thunderstorms that disrupted the flow of everything. And, you know, you got a new quarterback playing. you got a lot of guys in new positions. And now you got this disruption of going into the locker room, coming back out, playing a few more minutes, going back into the locker room. But what people forget was that second half was played in an absolute deluge. I went down on the field after the game, 
and walked across the field, and the water was coming up over my shoes up to my ankles on oh, that field. Wow. And, and so, so people discount that the second half was tough because they didn't take them off the field. But to me, that was just as bad. So BYU could never get in the flow. So you've got to factor that game out. That was just so weird. Okay. I don't think it's representative of how BYU plays in season openers. I believe they'll be ready to go against UConn. UConn has talent. UConn's as talented as the, as the good teams in the old Mountain West Conference. But I think BYU gets that one, and then – then we'll, we'll launch them from there because there's a plenty of tough stuff coming down the road after that. But I'm, I'm, I'm confident they're going to go back and get that game. Jerem says BYU by 17, 17, 17 plus. plus yeah, 17 yeah. plus. Just like yeah. I said I'm in not, Houston I'm, last year. I'm not worried about them in that one. I'm not at all. No. I'm worried about Texas. I'll be honest with you. I'm worried about Texas. Oh, yeah. So. Sure. Are the coaches most worried about UConn right now? Is that the coach's answer? Yeah, the coach. Well, that's what they'll tell you. Great A baloney, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the coach will say, "Oh, we got to which is true because you can't you can't even start to prepare for Texas until you're completely pre- prepared for UConn. So, as a coach, it is easy to say that because your preparation every day is just for your next game. Well, we just got to focus. We just got to focus. But I guarantee you, coach, player, doesn't matter who it is, when they're not in prep mode, when they're not at the field or at the at, you know in the and they're just looking at the schedule or they're reading the newspaper, you know they look down and go, wow, at Texas, 100,000 plus. You know, ooh, man, that UCF game is going to be tough. There are games that they look forward to. And so for a coach to say, I never think about anything, but, well, in their actual preparation, they don't. And that's their job, they don't. But to say that they don't think about the big games on the schedule and circle a couple in their mind, every one of them do, including Bronco. 38 days away from the season opener. Blaine cannot wait. Uh, for, I believe 46 days away from your trip uh, to Austin, Texas. Awesome. So look forward oh, to that. Oh, baby. I am, that, that is, and I've done a couple of games there in, in, in my career. It is one of my favorite stadiums in the country. It's such an unbelievable environment. And, it's, and they've got talent, and it's going to be a great game. I mean, I like our chance. I'm not saying Texas is. It's not a winnable game. I'm saying that's the toughest game on the schedule just from a pure talent perspective, and I think this coaching staff's going to instill some new life into that program. But, I, I, but I'm not saying BYU can't go down there and just punk them and just, and just get it down there. Hey, if, get if, Jay, if Jay Keeps led BYU to a one-point loss there, I think Taysom can go down and win. <laughs> I do. Yes. And that's the end of that. Hey, Blaine, great they're to have you with they're, us. They're, they'll, they'll be better than they were that year. Texas will. <laughs> but, but Taysom Hill is going to – how about, how about a last drive down the field like against Houston in front of 100,000-plus on national TV? I'm, that's going to be such a fun post-game show. That's all I have to say. If, he can, fun show. if he's hitting golf carts in Mississippi, he can do it at Texas, right? <laughs> Absolutely. No question. <laughs> all right, Blaine. We'll talk to you soon, All right, man. guys. We'll see you.